All right. So I'm working on a bunch of fish illustrations for a client of mine who will be using them in a game. And you can see these guys have some pretty good character. I think they're, they're all unique. There's 77 of them. We got lots of different stuff going on. Little hints of stylized scales. You know, some with mouse, some without. Um, and you may be, may or may not be, surprised to hear that these started with uh, AI. Now, don't don't let me lose you. I think uh, AI did a fine job, but we're really up leveling them. You can see. Look at this mess straight out of AI. Some kind of weird organs happening in there. Uh, deteriorated tail. You know, this thing has a, a beak and a floating speck above it. So there's a lot of issues. And these ones below that I've finished weren't too much different. But by starting with something, it's like having one of those Rorschach images where you see black and white splotches and you kind of have to decide what can I make of this or what do I see? And so that's what, what I'm doing here with these. And so I thought I'd show you my process on one of these fish. So, you know, work with Mid Journey or whatever, get a bunch of images generated and then use them, make them unique at this point. So I guess you could call it a collaboration with AI, but uh, you know, I think it's 10% AI, 90% human in this case. So let's see, I'm painting with a customized flat brush. Got the same thing as an eraser. And so this is, I'm working on a transparent layer with a black background just so I can see any issues. And so with my eraser, I'll just start kind of erasing away things that I don't even want to mess with because they're, they're so off and, and not what, uh, what I think makes for a, a good fish. And like you saw before, I'm using a fairly sharp eraser so that the edges will be clean and I can you know, use those as a clipping mask later on, which is helpful. So, you know, just what do I see here? You know, this has a weird beak. I don't like that. Let's give, a, give this fish an, an underbite. So, chop off some of this and we don't need to be too precious. We can switch over to the paintbrush. Just kind of sample a color from the existing fish and use it to kind of flush out the boundary. And I'll go in and clean up these colors with uh, with the airbrush, but we're just looking to create a sharp silhouette and a hint generally where I'm looking to go. Um, okay, so you get the idea, it's paint erase at this point. Okay, so already it's a huge improvement and um, relatively different from what AI gave us. Now, I don't like how this fin joins here, but I do kind of like how far swept back it is. So I'm just gonna cut in here and just remove some of what's going on there. Okay, <clears throat> so this is kind of a form language for 
for the rest of the fish now. I'm gonna do these big kind of organic shapes for the rest of the fins. So you can see it's got some uneven kind of waviness to it, which I'm kind of trying to work into this back fin, tail fin, if you want to get uh, <coughs> a little bit more accurate. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll just fill this in. You might say, why don't you just start from scratch with fish? And that is definitely a way to go. And, you know, normally I would do that. But the client came to me with uh, AI generated, generated set of fish. And it was kind of helpful because it gave me a direction of where this guy wanted his fish to go, you know? They were gonna be really big eyed, um, understated mouths, kind of like aliens, I guess. Big eyes, little mouths. And because I had a place to start from, I was less likely to repeat some of the same stuff. You know, as you're working through 77 different fish and you're starting from scratch, you know, you'll get kind of lazy and tell yourself like, well, maybe I'll do this general shape again. But because we had AI to start from, it's like every time I'm presented with a new fish to do, I'm, it's not a blank canvas. It's something to trigger my creativity. There's, I might see something I like, like this, this fin on this fish, or something I don't like, which, you know, will push me into a different direction. So I think, I think this is definitely a new way of working and collaborating with the client because now your client, you know, they may not be able to sketch or draw or communicate very well what it is they're looking for, uh, you know, with with imagery, but if they can write a decent prompt and spend some time before engaging you with Midjourney or some other AI platform, it's kind of like someone just going out and finding existing images out there that they like and saying, hey, can you create me a set of fish that uh, is inspired by this style. And so essentially I'm just creating a set of fish that's inspired by what the AI generated. So already we've got some decent stuff going, I think. You can see I used the airbrush there a little bit to, you know, kind of fade in the colors, get rid of some of that weirdness. I'm gonna go ahead and work on a different layer for his, I don't know, one of the dorsal fin, uh, I don't know, side fins. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm a designer slash illustrator. All right, so give me a break. <laughs> um, there you go, just kind of glob something out. And then I can use my eraser if I want to give it a sharper edge or decide like, hey, how can I make this fit within the form language of this fish in general, the other fins that I've already created and, and such. Sitch. All right, picking up what you're putting down, friend. You got your little 
flipper, flippity flip flop. All right, let's uh, airbrush in a little taste of colors, highlights, give this fin a little bit of dimension. And there you go, I've got pretty decent fish, especially compared to some of these weird AI things that are going on. We could call that good, but we're gonna take it further, okay? So buckle on up, my friends. But if you can see I'm trying to erase in an area, whoop, I don't wanna combine those yet. Let's keep them separate and I'll show you why. The way I can work on the body colors and get the shadow from that fin on the side. And if this was gonna be blown up and really big, then you might wanna take more care with uh, the edges and, and the detail. But these fish are meant to be pretty small when they're used. I mean, they'll be seen at about that size. So, yeah. Pretty, pretty small, let's see. All right, and then just darken it up again. Uh, if you're not comfortable with colors, uh, that is a good trick. You can see here I've created a new layer, I'm gonna do clipping mask, and then it will clip itself on the bottom layer. So if I were to draw this darker color, you can see it doesn't show up in the black, it just shows up on the the fish because of the clipping. And I can use that to brush in kind of this soft shadow at the bottom of the fish, give it a little bit more dimension. And then also, you know, brush in a shadow uh, for the fin. But uh, yeah, what was I saying earlier about color is that you pick your base color like so, and then, you know, there's different ways to visualize your colors. I'm using a wheel here. You could go to value and that might be easier to understand, but you can basically just add more black and darken that color up, which maybe way too dark. Let's try it again a little less. Whoops, wrong one, saturation. Um, take a little bit of black, put that in there. You can see it's darker. You can grab that same color again and add more white, and then it'll be brighter. And so you've got, you know, your mid-tone, highlight, shadow, just like that. And you can play with how much uh, saturation to put into it or slightly move the, the hue as well, um, which is essentially what I'm doing when I just drag this around to find a color that's a little darker, but it's staying in the same, you know, core color. Yeah, so anyways may or may not be helpful. Uh, like, whoa. I like these uh, eyes to pop off the fish a little bit more, so I'm gonna paint in shadow around the eye. I think one of the fish AI had done that with early on and I like that, and so I've just kept it as kind of vocabulary for the remaining fish designs. Some more pronounced than others. You know, we got a darker color, but it's not, not real dark, not like there's some real shading going on there. So what can I do? I can grab that and make it darker. I like how just under my pen there, pencil, you can see the color you had next to the color 
you will have. So that gives you a good idea of the contrast and whether it feels like it matches. But yeah, closer to the eye. I'll darken it up a bit because less lights getting in there and the shadow going to be more pronounced, right? Yeah, may have gone too, too much there, but that's the beauty of airbrush. So you can grab one of your other colors and kind of fade it in. Then grab yet another one of your colors, fade that in, and you're back back in business. No, no erasing, just painting over crap, you know? And so, you know, I added a little bit more shadow at the bottom, as you saw. Let's grab this darker color and maybe get a more in there at the very bottom. Let's go in darker. Well. So it's all subjective, you know. You do you. I can see I've got a. It's getting a little soft here, so I'm gonna grab my eraser. main layer and erase it away so that's the clipping mask see what I'm saying there and then that takes care of anything on the higher layer too because it's being clipped by it um, this fan has some of the same problems going on so I can go in there and sharpen that up and that's just that overspray from using the airbrush without clipping it and early on, I I'll tend to do that. Um, airbrush, just darken this a little bit. Kind of define some forms. I want to get some reflection or highlight going on in the body fish here you know because you see fish swimming underwater they tend to have a reflection right in that general region and I'm running into a spot where it's not working that's because I had this layer I'm gonna go ahead and just merge it down that way I can fade this highlight over it it's just up to preference, you know. You can certainly achieve the same results by working on just one layer. There might be more erasing, more tweaking than if you use multiple layers. Um, but sometimes that can sit in the way of creativity and flow because you're so busy following the process. Sometimes you just need to quickly get the character, the image going, so you know what it is you're dealing with. <clears throat> Just playing with a little bit of shadow to give some dimension to that little mouth, and I can grab a little bit of a highlight color and just touch the top of that. That makes it feel more 3D or realistic. All right, um, since I've already done the the shadow on the fin, I'm going to go ahead and merge that down as well. And I can grab highlight color, kind of sharpen up top edge of this fin. Get that in there. And so it's a balance between what's accurate as far as lighting goes, but also what helps it read the best. You know, like with that fin, you want it to pop off the background so you see what's going on. And so you use 
highlight and shadow to help you do that. You might exaggerate it a little bit um, because this is an illustration. It's not a photograph, so you can play with some of that stuff. And that's the difference between art and reproduction, I guess. So now it's just a matter of rendering, sharpening, you know, are there any other features I might want to add to this? Um, do I just keep it a simple gold or yellow fish or, uh, you know, is there something else I want to do to make it more unique? I don't know. One thing I want to do is maybe work on another layer because creating more trouble for myself with uh, overspray. I'm going to go in and sharpen things maybe more than I would have liked, right? Um, maybe we'll put some simple gills on this guy. So let's go a new layer, <clears throat> make your tip a little smaller and just sketch something in to represent some gills. We're just cutting right on through the highlight area there as well as the darker color of the mid-tone. So that right there looks pretty decent, but you could you can always push stuff further. Let's grab this highlight and just define an edge. And you're just gonna notice it on that mid-tone area up there. Okay, and then if we grab our darker color again and maybe darken it up even more, we can, in this mid-tone area, make the slice of the gill a little darker. And I did it up in this lighter area, which uh, is all right. And then if it's too sharp, grab your color and you can just kind of airbrush over it to fade it in if, if that gets you where you want to go and zoom out and there you go you got something so merge that down do another layer we'll make it a clipping mask and we're gonna finalize this thing so with the airbrush Kind of defining some areas here. I don't have to worry as much because I've got a clipping mask. Overspray is under control. Um, this area is a hot mess. Just picking colors and smoothing things out, rendering, if you will. Do we want this lighter color to go all the way off the fish canvas, if you will, or do we want to have it terminate inside the fin? I think we're going to go with the latter, or the former, the first one I said. You can see some areas where we can sharpen things up down here on the fin where we got a little lazy. Um, maybe we darken things up a little bit, add a little orange, a little interest. And just wait for it, but after I'm done laying down these main colors, if you will, I'm gonna pull out the secret weapon of digital art, which is blend modes. That's right. You may already know what I'm talking about and why that's so special, or you may not. Either way, I may do things different than you would have done it, so still worth 
still worth hanging around. You know, the airbrush, things can start to look a little mushy if you're not careful, so you gotta keep on going in and sharpening things, potentially, if that's what you're going for. You may say, hey, why do you keep talking? Just like, finish your stupid fish and so I can get on with my life. That's fine, you know? I'm just having a good time over here. You may not be. That is cool. I'm sorry to hear that. If that's the case. Alrighty. We could noodle on this forever. And there's always more to go. Originally the plan was that each of these fish would take me close to five minutes and they probably probably been closer to 10 or 15 um, and then in this case I'm demoing on top of it which is making it even slower and some of the fish came together a lot faster than that and others I just lost myself in self-expression that sounds artistic right or autistic, one of the two. Not that there's anything wrong with that. All right, fish. You might say, hey, we're good. Let's, let's call it, let's merge that down and move on. Well, I promised you layer modes. So in this case, I'm gonna use overlay, add any of these light ones. We'll give you some slightly different effects. And I'm gonna just pick one of these yellows and grab my airbrush and start painting over top. Whoa, look at that. Just added some intensity. Just painting in some brighter values or something. And you can go too far for sure, but that's where you can take down the opacity slider, get a feel for where we, we were and where we're going. And then what else? You can grab your eraser and set that to airbrush mode. And maybe it's a little too hot down here. We'll erase some of that away. Um, tease it in there, we'll grab the painting airbrush again, grab white, as white as we can get it, and then we can do that over the eye, you can see that starts to pop a little bit, maybe tips of these fins, and it's not as pronounced as it would be, remember, because I lowered the opacity of my layer. play with that but let's see the before and after after before after before after so you know maybe you like that maybe you don't I think it adds a little something something um, and you don't even have to stick with colors in that realm you could grab a more orangey color or really any color and on overlay mode paint that in there and see how it affects things. Okay, so I did that, not, not quite enough. I'm gonna go more red, see, that's cool. Look how it interacts with that shadow color underneath, kind of digging that. So experiment, yeah, now we're Doing some interesting stuff. All right. See, I tell you, y'all were 
doubting me there for a minute, weren't you? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. Hmm. Grab the eraser. Tone it down. Some spots. Alright, friends. That is a fish. Hope it helped.